Well, I was living in a tent behind leaks. Uh, I've been living there for 10 months, but about a few months in, my friend, my best friend, Courtney Jones, said, why don't we convert one of these trains? I'll come and help you. And then two, three days later, there I was in this shack. I mean, it's, it wasn't much, but it was a far stretch better than the tent. My son, Jack, uh, told me that his friend was sleeping rough because my sister and I were commenting on the weather and having to sleep outside. Um, so I told Jack um, to give this boy a ring. Um, and so he did. And then about an hour later or so, Kieran turns up here. And I was aware how, how nervous he was. And he looked grey, cold, just completely within himself. I work with communities, uh, interprived communities in Cardiff. I have never seen support like this. He's had his hair cut, he's had new clothes, people have been donating clothes, food. The whole time I was homeless, I was cautious who to tell and who to let in on the secret that I was homeless. Uh, I put a lot of effort into trying to hide it with the way I dressed, the way I presented myself, and uh, obviously I didn't, I didn't point out that I lived in a shack behind leaks. But now, all this support has made me feel like I'm comfortable admitting where I've been and what I've done because there's no shame in being homeless. It's nice not being on my own anymore because the one thing that that shack did for me was it made me feel lonely and on my own and, you know, no one can relate to what I was going through. Even, like, my friend Courtney, he tried. He tried his best. Present yourself to someone or some way and show them what you're made of and if it doesn't work out then ring me up <laughs> yeah I'll uh any homeless person who phones me I'm willing to help I've been there I've done it and I've come out the other end a better person so survival is key and if you can't survive on your own then survive together